you want to know more about model railroad scenery, why don't you stick around and watch this segment and see how we do it on my in-scale model railroad, the Sayhurst Secondary. Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey Conrail and InScale, welcome back. This is the construction series and uh, this month we're going to be starting on Jamesburg, as you can see over my shoulder. A um, little different this month and let me explain to you why. Um, June has not been kind to me this month. Uh, it's just one thing after another scheduling wise, um, things breaking, cars needing to go to shop, uh, my daughter getting finished with kindergarten and you know, life. Life was getting in the way this month and uh, but that's okay. I mean, we're it's model rarity. Uh, family comes first, so uh, we just had to put a lot of stuff on the back burner. So I didn't quite get done what I expected to get done this month. So with that being said, uh, you know, I'm going to do the video and show you what I've done to date. Now the video. Um, this video is not really going to be how I did it this month. It's going to be more like this is what I did. Um, and the reason why I'm doing it this month is because all of the footage that I looked at was just not really great. So by the time I reduced it down and edited it, um, there was only about like two minutes of video. So uh, what's happening here is in this tight confines here where the camera's position is pretty much the only place that I can shoot. And when I'm working, I got a lot of great video on my shoulder. I got a lot of great video on my elbow, but uh, nothing of real usefulness to everybody to watch. So uh, scrap the whole thing and uh, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to go through and show you what I've done and explain to you how I did it. Um, so consequently, I'm not going to bore you for 30 minutes of me uh, yapping away. Um, I'll just keep it brief and show you where we're going and um, then I'll step back and uh, tell you what, what you can plan on for the coming months. Okay, so before we get started with the tight shots, I just want to go over a couple things. Um, first off, uh, the scenery technique. Um, if you recall back in Sayreville, the engine facility in Brown Yard, I used a lot of cardboard webbing and plaster gauze. Then when I went to Dayton, I started using the styrofoam and I brought it all the way down here into down into Englishtown. And what I wanted to do is I just wanted to experience a different type of scenery uh, so I could gain the experience and just see what I thought was better. Um, so initially what I learned over in Sayreville is that even though you're making the cardboard webbing, uh, you can't make it totally flat uh, no matter how, how hard you try. There's always going to be some kind of bumps and, and unevenness. Um, in a mountainous terrain or a wooded area, that that's that's fine. When you're dealing with an industrial area or a town where there's a lot of structures, that leads to the problems because you need that area that's flat to put them buildings on. So I was using a lot of sculpt mold to flatten out the building areas. Then when I went to Dayton, the buildings were sitting right down on the styrofoam because styrofoam by nature is flat. However, when I came over here to Jamesburg, the town of Jamesburg, there's a lot of relief. There's some areas that are lower than track grade. Um, then there's the deep areas like in the lake and stuff. So I thought, hey, you know what? It won't be that hard because I just got to cut through it. So started using the hot wire foam cutter. Not all that great. Um, that It does run into some issues there. Um, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is the hot wire foam cutter that I'm using. I got this off of Amazon. It was about 10, 15 bucks, really inexpensive. Works really good. Uh, you saw it in the video over there in Dayton. Uh, does the job really well. However, when you're getting into detail areas, like you gotta work down and you're trying to peel off layers, like large relief areas, doesn't really work because of these prongs. Now, I don't know, there may be other attachments that are better than this, but I don't have it. So what I ended up using was just a rasp. And the rafts, even though it's time consuming, messy, um, it gets the job done. So that was how I was able to, to bring down a lot of those layers on the flat areas of Jamesburg and kind of contour it out. So I point this out to you so that uh, if this is what you're considering to use for scenery base, you know, keep that in mind. The, you may have to have a multitude of tools to try different techniques. So uh, that's what I'm running into now. Second thing was the uh, choice of my materials. Um, when I did Dayton, I used a green styrofoam that was available at Lowe's. I can't remember the manufacturer's name who did the green one. Um, this area here, I went with pink, which is uh, Owens Corning. 
um, it's the Pink Panther brand. Um, and when I was shopping in uh, Home Depot, I, I happened to run across this product here. This is PL300 by Loctite. It's made specifically for foam board. It's a blue stuff. You put it in a caulk gun and you squirt it out. Awesome stuff. Uh, it has a long set time, so you have a lot of working time to maneuver your pieces around where you want. When it dries, it's ultra light and it dries very, very hard in between. And it bonds between different types of materials, not just the foam board. So when I used it uh, in between the fascia and the foam, it worked just as well. So uh, great product to look for. Um, I know Ho Home Depot carries it. It's really inexpensive. I want to say it was less than $10 a tube. And I got all of this section on one tube. So well worth it. And uh, all you need is a caulk gun. Okay, so uh, let me reposition the camera. I'm going to get behind the camera and um, I'll talk you through it and show you what I've done so far. Okay, so here's the Wyatt James work. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of things going on right now. So um, first off, what I've done is I've been able to use cardboard strips and gauze to blend the two scenes together. And uh, then I'm going to come in and fill this in with sculpto mold. And then you'll see that these two scenes blend together so there won't be a noticeable difference in the track levels. Um, same has happened back here. Uh, the, the foam is up higher, um, and I'll have to blend that in with Sculpta Mold as well. Um, I've started laying in roads. Uh, I'm using a foam mat, two millimeter foam mats that I got at uh, Joanne Fabrics. You can also get that stuff at uh, Michael's. Really liking the way this is coming out. Um, it's very simple and easy to use. Um, however, I have not uh, gotten to painting or blending the seams. Um, so stay tuned for more of that. I put in all of the uh, grade crossings. These are Blair line curved crossings that I put in. This is actually one set here and this is like one and a half um, because of the curvatures I had to extend them so that it occupies the whole roadway width. This little hump you see here, I had to cut out the foam and raise it up to clear the control panel for the Y. So that's why it's up, but I've been able to blend it down uh, by taking some off and then blending it in with the uh, plaster gauze. Uh, and coming back here, you can see this is how I've blended the scenery together with Brown's Yard, because this is where it ended. So then I just uh, laid the plaster gauze over and then started the scenes together again. And so what the plan for this area is, there was a gas station in this area and then there was a Cumberland Farms in here. So I'm going to get suitable uh, kits that I can put in there. Um, in the middle of the Y Jamesburg, even though the RY is considerably smaller than the prototype, um, there was a Pennsylvania Railroad station that was in here up until the late 80s when they uh, demolished it. So I'm going to see if we can find a suitable kit to put in here to represent that, um, that station. So as you can see, once we started putting in the subterrain and blending it all together, it's all starting to make sense now. And uh, I'm really liking the way the scene's coming together. This is Gatsmer Avenue. This is uh, West Railroad Avenue. And this will be East Railroad Avenue. As you can see from the mock-up, uh, this is close to prototype size. It's going to be way too big. I'll have to cut back to here maybe. i also have to shorten the walkway to make this shorter so it can fit in there. Because on the other side, this is East Railroad Avenue. Then there was Lincoln Avenue that went this way. So I need to fit all five in. We called this the five points intersection because there was five roads coming together. Gatsmer Avenue will continue on that way. It becomes 522 and it will curve to the backdrop. If you recall from you know previous videos and pictures, the, the foam was up about this about this high above track level. So I brought it down considerably in here. Um, the reason I haven't put this roadway in yet is because of what you're gonna see next in the next scene. All right, so right here, this road comes out here, joins with West Railroad Avenue, and then joins with East Railroad Avenue in an intersection here. Um, this is Manalpin Lake here. There was a dam and spillway that went into a canal. Um, as you can see, I put in the bridge abutments. These are made by Chooch Enterprises. 
and then all my ro wall retaining walls uh, I got off of uh, modeltrainstuff.com. It's done by a company called Fine Inscale Products. A uh, pretty good uh, product to use. Very flexible, easy to cut and f uh, put in. So I put them in and then backfilled them in with sculpta mold. The the base for the river is in with the plaster gauze. I uh, just have to come in and do a, a plaster pour. I want to get everything painted in here first before I do that. This uh, highway overpass is still not attached down yet. This is uh, Rick's. I have to paint that and I'll get that in. So the road for East Railroad Ave hasn't been laid in because I need to get this bridge set first. Then I can do the roads and then we'll be set with that. I still have to build the dam that's going to go into the spillway. I'm going to get started on that this week, hopefully. Most of the base for the uh, the lake is in. I, I use Sculpta Mold to seal up the plastic gauze. I got a lot of, little bit of work here. And then we'll do a plaster pour to make nice flat for, for the water. The road will curve this way to the backdrop. This will probably be a wooded area in here. Um, over here, I'm going to put some various businesses. Uh, this street here had curbside parking on the one side, actually both sides. So they'll have curbside parking on both sides. That's why the roadway right away is so big. As I've indicated in the past, you know, Jamesburg's a good seven or eight blocks long. We're not going to be able to fit that in here. So I've cut it back where it's probably going to be like two blocks long. So I'll put the row of businesses in here, shorten up the Memorial Park back to occupy maybe about half the space that it's taking up so I can get a side street in with maybe one more building. And then I'm not going to go any further deeper. I'll do one row of buildings. I'll backfill everything behind the buildings with trees. Uh, so you'll see, you know, a nice tree line backdrop behind the buildings. There is one more building I'm going to try to get in back here. There was a place that we called Sloppy's Bar. Uh, it looked like a house, but it was actually a bar and tavern on the corner, just past the uh, on the other side of Lincoln Ave. So I'll see if I can find something that'll fit in that area to make that. So those are the structures will be in there. I'm not thinking about any structures in here. However, this corner lot here, it's kind of open. Maybe I'll find something that I can fit in there. This here, if you notice, this is all needs to be filled in. I put the roadway surface in, but I got to come in, backfill it with plaster. Uh, excuse me, with sculpta mold. One of my operators, Brian, is working on a uh, Arduino project for me now. That's gonna. This intersection is going to be controlled by a traffic light. So what happened was the traffic light was also linked to the signals. So when a train came in, the traffic light would go all red and the signals would come on. So he's working on getting that project all finished. So I want to get these roads in as quick as possible. So when he gets it done, I can mount it. Um, so that's going to be add a little visual interest to the scene. One last thing is the uh, cantonary poles will continue down this line and make the curve towards the backdrop to go towards Dayton. Um, that was where the electrified line went that way. Um, all the rest of it was non-electrified. The other thing is that this area here where all the businesses are going to be, that still may be a little too high. I may end up having to bring that level down with the, the rasp. And then the area back along the backdrop needs to be filled with sculpta mold so that it's all continuous. Um, then we're going to put more clouds. This backdrop is going to have clouds on it in here. So we'll come in and we'll do that. I still have to install all the tie, cross ties to fill the gaps and then paint the track and weather the crossings that I put in. Okay, everyone, there you go. That's what we've done so far. Uh, really happy with the way James is coming out. Um, loving the way that the track and the trains are inter uh, interacting with the scenery. Even though we just got 
the roads basically laid out and the crossings in. I'm loving how uh, the trains are running through the scene, so very happy. Looking forward to getting this scene finished. Um, let's talk about time frame. So, you know, initially, months ago, I was saying I wanted to get these two scenes, Jamesburg and Englishtown, done by the end of the summer. Realistically, uh, that's not going to happen. I'm going to have to push this back towards the end of the year um, because there's a lot of things going on in my life. Summer's been very busy, and uh, we're getting ready to add a new member to the family here at the end of the year. So there's going to be a lot of baby projects coming up. So uh, going to keep picking away at it, but, you know, baby's going to take precedence, and uh, train's going to have to wait. That's okay. So by pushing this off towards the end of the year for finishing, that'll set us up for 2020 for stopping all forward progress because I got to get over there and rip out that track. I got to start building fast tracks, turnouts. It's getting really bad. I can't even run northbound traffic right now because with the change of the season, I guess the moisture content down here, the track has kind of swelled a little bit. And that one curve turnout over there by uh, uh, Clayton, uh, northbound just derails so uh, i've been filing and tweaking and turning and the it just it's got to be all relayed so i think that's the best thing for the layout is to not to fiddle with it anymore and not to get frustrated just rip it out start all over so uh, but when i start doing that work that's when i'm gonna come back and do detail work on all these scenes because i'm getting tired of looking at cervo with no striping and signage and all that stuff um, weathering over at the engine terminal. So I think the beginning of next year, I'm going to take you scene by scene as I do my detail work, putting in poles and lines and all that stuff. And I think that'll kind of fill the gap of not starting forward progress again. And then uh, once we get started where the track is running properly and smoothly, um, then we can start with scenery again and uh, maybe even start with the end of the peninsula a little early. But uh, that's what you can look forward to. Um, you know, I had aspirations of getting this whole thing done at a certain time frame, but life happens, you know, and that's, you got to balance life between model rarity. So I'm okay with it. I'm happy. I hope you guys still keep following along. Um, no, I'm not going anywhere. I promised you I was going to get this project done on video just as I started on video. So the good thing is that even though I'm progressing with scenery here, I can honestly say that the track work here is really good i have no problems running trains all the other turnout problems have been fixed i still have two more spring wires to fix in the yard and i'm hoping to get that done before july 14th uh op session and that's quickly closing in on me so that's why i'm doing this video now wrapping up work for the month and uh, i gotta start prepping the room for uh our uh, op session so gonna be a big op session i think i got about 10 people coming already ron Clays is coming for the first time and i'm very happy that he's coming to operate on my layout because uh I really respect Ron, and I'm looking forward to having him here. So with that being said, that's all I have for you this month. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you like what you see, uh, please subscribe to the channel because we're always producing great free content like this. If you haven't done so already, please check out my Facebook page and Instagram account because I'm always posting daily updates. Otherwise, that's all I have for you, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.